What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Thank you so much for the crazy response to our previous video showing you our new Drift Game Studios in Dublin city centre on the second floor of a warehouse. It's part of a bigger building called the Engine Block. Today we're going to talk to you about it, we're going to show you our car collection, and we're going to show you how we get cars onto the second floor. Good morning guys, it is our first official day at our brand new facility, the Drift Game Studios, here at the Engine Block in Dublin. This is a big moment, our first day officially here. As you can see, you walk up, you can see our name on the door, you get the beautiful view of the merch shop, and all the boys are in and having fun this morning. Let's see what they're getting up to. It's still just wild walking in here. There is so much to get through in this video. We're gonna show you all of these builds, all of these cars, explain why they're here, what the plan is, and all that good stuff. Let's go catch up with the boys. Good morning! Awesome. Oh, he's here. Oh. Hi, Dave. I was expecting a much more upbeat and, well, look, it's us. You leave your feelings at the door here, right? Yes. What feelings? Oh. Everybody's settling in. Josh is doing? Editing. Plane. <laughs> why don't you give it to Having some yeah. coffee. Yes. It's enough for Blaine to justify his position. Adam, what are you doing? LZ customer service. LZ World Tour customer service. Probably very sassy. Look at that face for a man on customer service. Loves it. Keen. Yes, David. What are you doing? I am making the media briefing presentation for Finland for Driftmasters. Sounds for everything. Davidis, what are you doing? I'm currently working Looking very on relaxed. I like this I, I like nice relaxed yeah. approach. Sure. It's the Eastern European approach. You know, we do work laid back here. It's a laid back yeah. approach. I like it. What are, you, what are you working on? So I'm working on LZ World Tour socials right now. So if you guys have been living under a very big rock, the LZ World Tour is just weeks away in Ireland and there was a ton of stuff being revealed this week, so the boys are working hard on it. Place looks good, boys. I like the vibe. Day one is not nice. messy. It's all clean. Yeah, it's all clean. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Look it wasn't me. Right, you guys didn't come here to talk about boring stuff. You came here to talk about exciting stuff, which is how do we get the cars into our facility? Look at that view. And how do we get them out? And also, what are all these cars? And what's the plan with them? And if you're new to the channel and you just started watching the last video, which I advise you go and watch because none of this will make sense without it, we got a lot to get through. All right, so one of the cars that came back recently was the Skyline. We're gonna get to it in a minute, but. My man Craig is here. What are you doing, Craig? Putting one of our new Grip Royale drift game steering wheels into it. So you're putting a nice, tasty, perforated leather steering wheel into it. I like it. Yeah. Craig, I need your help. Everybody yeah. in the comment section from the last video has been talking about how do we get all of these cars to the second floor of the building. And I've driven your car in. I, I didn't thought know. I heard my car. <laughs> and I want to show everybody how we do it. The ramp, it's pretty wild. And Craig's car is actually the lowest car we have. So everyone's been talking about, oh, your cars are all on air. How do they get up there? It must be really difficult. Craig's is the lowest, so it is the benchmark. We're gonna go throw it up on the ramp now. This is a pretty complicated procedure. It's not that complicated, to be honest. It's quite simple. So we have a shutter at the top of our second story going straight out to absolutely nothing. I'm gonna show you what's on the other side. It's pretty scary. As on the sticker, <laughs> 20 foot drop. <laughs> there is a 20 foot drop. So this is our car lift, which has uh, been built by Moffat Parking Solutions. It's an interesting solution to a problem that most people don't have. How do you get your cars into the second floor of a building? This is how you do it. This is a mighty bit of kit, to be fair. But to show you how it works, we gotta go back downstairs. So we start with the ramp fully down, take off our safety chain, and Craig's gonna show you how we get low cars up high. So now the car's on the ramp, here comes the scary part. Alright guys, that is how we get cars into our Drift Games studios. It's pretty cool, it's something different, it's a real feature piece, and it helps us to afford a massive unit in Dublin City, which we wouldn't have been able to afford otherwise. Now we talked in the last episode about a lot of cars in here, there is a ton of cars in here, 
and there's a lot of stories behind them. Now, if you're new to the channel, we're going to give you a quick overview. If you're a long time subscriber, there's someone here that you won't recognize, so let's dig into it. We're going to start with the craziest car, I think, in here, which is our Drift Games F6, which is a play on the Corvette C6, but we think it looks a little bit like a jet plane. It's all blacked out, looks insane, and I'm going to give you a little quick run through of the car. So we started with a completely standard Corvette C6. It was an LS3 powered car. 6.2 liter, but it was automatic and completely stock. We did everything on this car. It's got FDF uh, full angle kit on this car, full BC racing suspension. All the wiring has been taken out of the car and replaced with a custom wiring loom by Motorsport 56, running everything in the Link ECU catalog to make sure everything runs smoothly and we can analyze it all on the digital dash. It's a full carbon fiber car. Every single panel is carbon fiber from HGK, which has been modified and looked absolutely insane with all of these wings, splitters, and canards by Group D in Cork in Ireland. The amazing thing about this car is while it is an American car, all of the work done on it was done here in Ireland. And it's the first Corvette to ever be built in Ireland. And I think we've built one of the wildest out there. It's got a sequential Samsonis uh, four-speed gearbox, winter's diff in the back. It's got drive shop shaft, unbreakable drive shafts on the back as well. Um, and this is my personal pro drift car. We're gonna see a lot more of this over the next couple of months out on track, shredding tires, but I absolutely love this thing. We'll do a full deep dive in a future episode, but we've got a lot to get through. Next up, we have a very, very interesting JZX Mark II. Now this car is not our car, but the reason it is here is because our friends at Keep It Reap in Australia, on a previous episode we went over to visit them and drive their car, they actually bought this car to give it away at the LZ World Tour. So this is a monster. This thing has a full BN Sports kit with some Origin Labo add-ons. It's got SSR wheels, BC Racing coilovers, ton of horsepower, wings. It's got a full Samsona sequential in a street car. It's probably the highest spec JZX in the country. We'll be talking about this more in a future episode, but this car is gonna be given away at the LZ World Tour to some lucky person as part of the Keep It Reek giveaway, but they'll be introducing that later date. We just gave it a little sneak peek as we go through. Next up, we have got my beautiful, I'll call it Cherry PS13. So this car started off as a stock PS. It was then built by Lewis Mitchell in the UK. Then we took it and went a whole other level with it. This runs a full D-Max body kit with Origin 75mm uh, over fenders front and back. The car is super wide and it needs to be to house these custom Strom wheels. These are one of ones that we got designed just for this car in the exact specs that would be perfect. We then put this on BC Racing coilovers. We added an airbag to the BC Racing coilovers to drop this thing on an airlift controller right to the ground. It runs kind of a stock-ish SR setup. It's got an S15 turbo and operated clutch, operated diff, and a few other bits and pieces. Mild in performance, but wild in looks. That was the whole point of this car. And this car, I wanted to modify it because I couldn't really modify this one. This is the most famous car we have here at the Drift Game Studios, which is the Spirit Ray car, which won its class at the Tokyo Auto Salon a couple of years ago. And it is exactly as it was in the Tokyo Auto Salon. This runs the Miyabi kit. This was the first car to have the Miyabi kit built by Spirit Ray themselves in-house. And it's got just a wild look and a wild aesthetic to the car. It's super low mileage. It's got like 88,000 kilometers on the shell. It's rust free. It's a real timepiece. It's been modified, but it's quite a beautifully modified car, subtle in many of the lines on the car. It runs work wheels, it has a full air suspension setup. Again, mildly tuned SR with all the fancy bits, clutch, diff, S15 turbo, running about 350 horsepower, um, bright interior, everything retrimmed. This is just a beautiful car. Sometimes this car is just here because we're just loving looking at it every single day. Um, yeah, more of that on the channel. If you want to go back and dig out some videos, you'll see a lot more on that and our full history of that car a couple of episodes back. This is definitely one that a lot of people wouldn't expect um, what's under the bonnet. So this is a Datsun 240Z. It was built in Las Vegas as a full resto mod. Now back in the 80s and 90s, there was a company called Scarab who used to put V8 engines into 240Zs because the 240Z was actually created for the US market as a coupe to go head to head with the likes of the Mustang and things like that. But the engine that was in there, while it is a Revy engine and sounds very cool, doesn't have a whole lot of horsepower. So this particular car has everything ripped out, full wiring loom, and it runs a race-built, small-block Chevy engine. I'm going to show you that now. So this definitely isn't your standard 240Z. So this is a fully race-built engine, 
we haven't given it full clean yet, but we will, um, with all the goodies on it. Runs about 450 horsepower, naturally aspirated, and it's actually got a weird mix mash of parts. So the front brakes on this car are from a Hilux, the rear brakes are from a Maxima, the differential is from a 300ZX, it's got a four-speed dog box and a V8, so it's quite a mix of modern-ish parts on a very old car, completely rust-free and reinforced for all the power it has. It was originally orange, but then we changed it to this gray, metallic gray and black. We put uh, SSR mesh wheels on there in 15s. It's run semi-slicks front and back because the power on 15s is actually really hard to put down. It is a beast of a car on the road, and we'll be doing a lot more with this in the future. We've upgraded a couple of things since you've seen it last. We've redone the rockers and the engine. They were just a little bit tired. We've also done a digital speedo, and we've upgraded the headlights because the two headlights that were on this car were like two, I don't know, like two lighters. They couldn't see anything, so we've put a full HID setup on this car in the black. I think it really suits the whole aesthetic of the car, and it's got a full Skillard uh, front grill delete with a splitter, with a kit. There's so much on this car. We'll get back to it on a future episode. Moving along, we've got my usual daily driver, which is the GR Toyota Supra. This is a 2021, one of three registered on Irish plates. And this car was originally red, but we actually got the guys from Precision Tinted Graphics to completely redo the car in satin black. Um, this car also wears a one of one set of forged Strom wheels that are just being built specifically for this car and the fitment on this car. There is no other set in the world. We've got a carbon fiber front spitter, carbon fiber side skirts, carbon fiber rear diffuser, carbon fiber wing, and I think this thing just looks like the Batmobile. It's got a full tune, it's running about 400 horsepower. We've done a titanium exhaust, we've decatted it, we've got an intake. And pretty much that's it. It's kind of like an everyday car that has a little bit more spice to it, and I think it looks absolutely incredible. The car that you will never have seen before, or truck rather, is this. So this is a brand new purchase that only came in the day before we launched the Drift Game Studios, and I've been watching this car for quite some time. So I really wanted an old school American truck, and this is a 1970 uh, C10 Chevrolet straight body short bed. So it's a very rare car to get. So you'll either see these trucks with uh, a step side, which means they kind of come in here at the back, or they've got a long bed, which makes them really, really big. But I just absolutely love the aesthetics of this. This was owned by a tattoo parlor in Florida, in Miami, actually, I think. Um, and it was imported to the UK, and then it ended up in Ireland. The car has been completely sprayed in satin black, including the wheels. Everything about it is just mean and dark, which is what I like. I love what they've done with the wheels. Um, but it doesn't run the original engine, so... Just like the Datsun, this is also running a small block Chevy V8. Um, and the plan for this car is maybe to modernize it a little bit more. We wanted a very cool tow vehicle for something that we're working on behind the scenes, and this is gonna be it. So we're gonna modernize the car quite a bit to make sure that it drives smooth, runs smooth, needs a few little bits. It's got the HID headlights, so it's quite similar headlights and engine to the Datsun, which is quite funny, but um, a very different beast. The cool thing about this is that it's a real sort of I don't know, mean look on the outside, sort of uh, outlaw style. And then the inside is like brand new. So the inside of the car has been, as you can see, completely retrimmed. Everything is just spot on, really simple, really clean. I think it absolutely looks great. And the bed is all brand new. Um, I got this car for an absolute bargain, in my opinion. So I'm really chuffed on it, and I always wanted an American V8. So what I'm going to do is I want to start it up because it doesn't sound like a normal pickup truck. It's got quite a bit of a wrap to it. It also smokes out the, the whole place. studio. Yeah, let's just say NCT exempt, no catalytic converters, straight piped, and a lot of smoke. This is gonna be a fun project for us because it's quite a simple piece of machinery that we can modernize. We may put an LS in this, we may change a couple of the suspension parts. I'm looking forward to digging into it. We only got it last week, so we haven't done anything with it yet except sit it here, but I'm very excited about it. Next up, we have a Ferrari. Did Drift Games buy a Ferrari? We didn't buy a Ferrari, we're actually holding this car for Dean Motors. And that gives us a good little segue as we're halfway through the cars to show you what's below the Drift Game Studio because you know what's up here, but you don't know what's down there. This Ferrari represents what's downstairs, so let's go. 
So here we are in Dean Motors, which is directly below our Drift Game Studios. And this is one of the most exciting parts about being here at the engine block. There's eight companies in total, all car related, working together in one building, including us, which gives us lots of opportunity to check out some amazing cars. Because Dean Motors, everyone asks me, what do they sell? They pretty much sell anything automotive that's not boring. As you can see, everything from Rolls Royces, to Beetles, to Defenders, to Ferraris, to SL Black Series, to, GTRs, to Supras, to everything. And the most amazing thing about this place, which isn't quite finished just yet, is that we're gonna be allowed to take the keys of whatever we want to do reviews on crazy cars. So we might come in here every now and again, show you guys the selection, you guys can decide what we're gonna take for a road trip, what are we gonna take for a test drive, and we can put it on the channel, which is super exciting. So a little preview of Dean Motors right now. I'm like a kid in a candy store when it comes to this stuff. Every day you don't know what's gonna roll in. Everything is so random. If you're a car fan, this is the place to be. Anyway, let's go back upstairs. All right guys, we're back in the Drift Game Studios upstairs and let me tell you about this beautiful thing. This is my new daily. It is a four door or 32 Skyline. This is actually a pretty rare car. It was originally a four wheel drive. It's now converted to two wheel drive. And when we got it a couple of months ago, it was pretty tired. I actually sent my boy Jimmy Oaks up to check it out. He said it's all there but it's all a little bit rough. So what did we do? We got Wayne Curran to go through the whole car. We put a new turbo on there. We did all the mechanicals. It's pretty spot on, but it was rough on the outside. We ended up taking two different body kits from Origin Labo, different front bumper, different side skirts, and a rear bumper, making our own kit, putting a set of BC Racing coilovers on it, putting a set of the beautiful, strong DSO-5s on there. And this car, you can see the interior, is absolutely spotless. Just putting our Grip Royale steering wheel in there, as you saw Craig earlier on. We're just cleaning everything up, modernizing everything. We're gonna put a stereo in there, we put an alarm on it. And it's four doors and a boot. It's, it's kind of practical, right? So it's gonna keep the power pretty stock. It's just gonna be a reliable, good-looking, everyday car. And Joey O'Neill from O'Neill Auto Body took this car about three or four weeks ago, and you would not believe how bad the paint was. And he absolutely smashed it. This thing is just a work of art. He went way over and beyond what we expected. We wanted a quick respray, but Joey said, nah, this car's too nice. He repaired some of the little rust patches on there, just small little bubbling around the windows. Took all the windows out of the car, full respray, and she looks beautiful. You're gonna see a lot more of this on the channel in the next couple of weeks as we get it registered through the national test and then onto the road. Right, S14. This is the beast. This may be the fastest car that we have in here because this car, as good as a show car it is, is also a go car. We put a full 2.2 SOR Forge running gear in this car. It has all the goodies. This thing is the bee's knees. So as, a, as I mentioned, SR 2.2, stroked out, ready intake, big precision turbo, full link ECU system the whole way through. This car on the DRT Automotive Dyno made 510 horsepower. And it still has candy paint, air suspension, full interior, GTR rear diff. It has an Orbi 25 gearbox. This is gonna be one we're gonna do a lot of ripping. And I'm thinking I'm actually gonna do a little bit of drifting in this. This was built to be a car that not only looks good, but goes good. And I can guarantee you over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be putting this through its paces. Let's move on to our only rotary car here. Um, we used to have two rotaries, but we gave one away. This is Josh's baby. This car started life as a very, very poor conditioned RX-7. In fact, the ad said mutilated. There was pieces cut out. It was halfway to being a drift car. Josh took a chance on it, it was a super cheap car, and actually built it right back up from scratch again. It runs reliably-ish for a rotary, and he put a full uh, body kit on this from TH Components. He did a full respray with O'Neill Auto Body, put big old work wheels on it, BC Racing coilovers, option seats, Grip Royale steering wheel, uh, three to six power rear wing, which is unusual for an RX-7. And this car has still a lot more way to go. So we've got a lot more to do with this car. Josh is going to be doing a lot more stuff on the channel with this to just put his own touches on it, make it a little bit more special. But it's a good starting point, right? It looks really, really cool. And then we have an empty podium because in the last video, you'll have noticed there was a car under the cover on this. It was Josh's MX-5 NC. In the next episode, after three years of building that car, fighting that car, probably losing interest in that car 15 times, we're hoping to take it to the track, finally get it revealed and reveal who'll be driving it at the LZ World Tour, which is in a time of filming about 17 days away. So LZ World Tour is hyping back up big time.
All right, so we will be getting on to all the LZ World Tour goodness in the next couple of weeks. We bought, well, I bought a new pro car, so the Corvette will not be my competition car anymore. I bought one, and Adam LZ will be debuting it at the LZ World Tour. We can't show you anything until the week of the event, but you guys are gonna lose your mind when you see this thing. So uh, that's all to come very, very soon. Also, we've got our BC Racing Drift Games podcast van. So this, we briefly rushed through in the video, but this was an abandoned Volkswagen van that was left in a hedge. We bought it for like a thousand euro and the boys renovated the whole inside to become a podcast studio. So we've got two separate camera setups. We've got all of our mics on stands. So as mentioned, the BC Racing Drift Games podcast is back. We can't wait to do it. We want to give all of our probably stupid opinions on lots of stuff in the car world. We really enjoyed it doing it before, but it took like four or five hours to set it up every time. We just didn't have the time. Now with this, just click a button, we record what we want to record, we put it straight up to you guys on the internet. So you guys will get it on Spotify and iTunes, and if you're a YouTube member on our channel, which we hope you guys are, you'll get the full video. So only the members get the videos. Alongside the video podcast, members on our YouTube channel get a ton of cool stuff as well. We've already got a behind the scenes video up right now, which is an even bigger deep dive into everything that's here. We'll be putting out separate videos to the main channel, showing you guys kind of the raw behind the scenes of Drift Games. We'll also be giving you guys a full members only access to this place to come and check it out before the general public can. So if you want to be in the mix, join up right now. You hit the join button at the top of the main page and thank you so much to everybody who supports us that way. It's amazing. And oh, thank you to everyone who's picked up some merch from the shop over the last couple of days. That is how we basically keep this whole show on the road. Without you guys supporting us, it's absolutely impossible. So if you want something like this, we are in limited stocks on lots of stuff on the website, so go over there now and grab it. Thank you so much to everybody who has purchased something from our merch store. We're blown away with the support, and it's helping us to go even madder, because remember, this is only phase one of what we're doing with this space. There is tons more ideas to come. Oh, almost forgot the car that started the whole video, Craig's PS. So we're gonna finish this video as we started with Craig's Pandem PS13. We have three PS13s up here, which is super cool, but this one started as a very tired CA18 uh, automatic, I believe. It now runs a 400 horsepower SR20. He has done an amazing job on this car. So full respray in this blue, green. You figure it out, let me know in the comments. It's actually a Lamborghini color, but is it blue, is it green? Is it green, blue, blue, green? You let me know. It's got some gangster uh, Meisters on there. It's got BC racing coilovers all around, so it means it can run at this ride height static. He's got some bright seats. He's powder coated his cage. He's got a snap off. Uh, Grip Royale steering wheel, pretty much the recipe for everything that we do here. And he drives this car daily, which, you know, is pretty impressive. I'm gonna show you guys under the bonnet because it's not just a show car, like everything else here, it's a go-car. So as you can see, he's done a shaved bay, wire tuck, full link ECU, and this SR20, I think it runs just over 420 horsepower, if I'm not mistaken. Um, big old turbo on there, as you can see repping the boys at Link ECU. All these cars run on the DRT Automotive Dyno on Link ECUs, that's why they stay going. So that is a full roundup, which we didn't get to in the last video because we had a lot to get through. So hopefully now you're up to speed with the cars, you're up to speed with the place, you're up to speed with the space, and you guys are gonna jump on the YouTube members or on the merch shop and help us out to make this even more crazy, if it needs to be any more crazy than this whole lift setup. So thank you guys for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the Drift Game Studios. The last two videos have been a lot of walking around and talking. From here on out, a lot of action. So if you want to subscribe, now is the time to do it. Over 50% of you don't subscribe. It means a lot to us. We're trying to get to 200K. Thank you guys for watching. We're going to see you on the next episode.